Good morning, folks. Today we're looking at the sun, a different impact zone for the hurricane, space science, including the past solar micronova, and a filament dancing here in ionized helium to start. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star, presenting a very solar maximum looking coronal hole. This one will impact Earth with enhanced solar wind before the weekend, active region cresting into view top right, and a true treat in ionized iron of that same filament from the start. Vertical orientation puts helical magnetism up the column, which you should see wrapping around and excluding particles from the top in a pretty coronal cavity. Worth noting a hitch in the solar wind, likely a secondary component of the now departed coronal hole system, not getting us into major territory, but the magnetic field did take one step back to handle this incomer with ease. The top quake of the last day is one they almost laugh at in this part of the world, Remember, we are approaching that increased risk window here soon. See yesterday's earthquake watch for more if you missed it. Folks, the hurricane looks beastly on goes, overlaying the lightning on some of the base maps here, but the big story is the shifted track. While yesterday Houston was under the gun for direct impact, the storm has made a key turn and is now going at Lake Charles. Tornadoes will also be a threat in the trailing storms towards the coast as the core moves inland to the north. Quick note on Pakistan, where 90 people have died in three days due to monsoon flooding. Not out of the woods in that part of the world either. Let's get out to space for our science of the day and begin with an aesthetic piece by Spitzer. Even after decommissioning earlier this year, there are years of data analysis left to do. This one represents a gorgeous infrared view of a stellar nursery. Up next, a big claim requiring big evidence. What they have is a computer simulation, a model that admittedly is very pretty, but if there is something that seems off about it and you're having trouble putting your finger on it, it's because they're doing a pulsar arm model where the arms go backwards, not the known galactic motion one would expect to see. Trust me, if galaxies don't spin like this, we've got even more trouble in physics than we thought. Up next, we move into the realm of the real where the radio waves reveal a deep galaxy and its jets. Multiple wavelengths were needed to pick out the different energy aspects of the core and those jets, and while it looks like a TIE fighter from this angle, we must remember it's tilted 90 degrees. Jets blast out the north and south of the galaxy. Up next, we're coming to interstellar space just outside the solar system, a dusty plasma environment threaded by the galactic magnetic fields. Within that region is the local interstellar cloud, and we're getting yet even more confirmation that it is a nova remnant. In this article, they are discussing Iron 60, one of the Nova confirming elements, but not one of those transuranic ones that tell us they were so recent in the past. And in addition to the already enormous gap in knowledge about the source of the interstellar cloud, we now have even more questions. The first can be dispatched. It was indeed from a Nova. But as for the even dispersion of the material, a recurring Nova on our star puts out that shell to surround us relatively evenly most of the time. Let's take a look at what the cloud actually is. We are going to be looking down from the north, turning such that the galactic center is off to the right, and of course, the source of the galactic sheet is found there as well, coming to the left. Even if we ignore what appears to be the wave-like shock front coming from the galactic center already engulfing our system, we can see that the majority of motions detected go with the expected trajectory of the galactic current sheet. Unlike the nearby stars, Proxima, Barnard, and Leo, which have gone off in a line at Earth from the galactic center, with the last being at our relative distance, we must remember those are dwarf stars. The sun is the biggest of the nearby spheres, and its powerful electromagnetic wind creates a stronger resistance to the outside. Eventually, however, like Earth's magnetic field will try to hold strong at the onset of a CME, Eventually, the field compression takes over. In this case, the galactic sheet risks bringing much of the dust and gas and interstellar plasma into the system with it, right to the sun, and accumulating in the solar atmosphere. If the sun can't get its light and particle output past an accumulation, you cork the pressure release, and the shell becomes a micronova when the interior pressure overcomes the coronal accumulation. But there is another means to that end, and that is the electromagnetic glitch, a plasma instability which we've seen as the culprit for NOVA in a couple of papers now, and it's similar to the way that the Earth reacts to changes in the solar wind, including the Sun's current sheet, polar excess of charged particles, and also the magnetotail events. 
while the frozen-in magnetic field lines are disfavored by plasma astrophysics, replaced by the double-layer electric sheet collapse and explosive release of the circuit energy, we do have that means by which the normal outflow of material could be temporarily short-circuited, leading to the same accumulation and micronova release. The isotopes we mentioned earlier in that paper, icing on the cake of the ones we knew about, and the recurrent solar micronova would absolutely produce a nice shell of material around us full of those isotopes. There's more on that in our other videos, including on our website homepage with all of our best information. It is also chapter 8 in our book, which isn't available again for six more days, but we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.